almost all strategies needs a filter to enhance its performance. And one of the best filters that you can add to a strategy is a volatility filter. In this video, I will explain to you what is volatility, how can you calculate it, and what are the indicators that are best suited as a volatility filter. Also, make sure to stay till the end where I will apply a volatility filter to a strategy to show you the difference between before and after. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Ali Casey and you are watching Stat Oasis channel where we discuss finance, investing, algorithmic trading and everything else in between. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing content that I post on this channel. Also, if you are getting any value out of this video, it would be amazing if you can share and like. So here is the volatility definition on Investopedia and as usual, it's <laughs> cryptic. So volatility is a statistical measure of the dispersion of returns for a given security or market index. But there are key takeaways which are the volatility represent the asset price swing around the mean. Now this is a good definition. There are several ways to measure volatility and this is true most of the time which is volatile assets most often considered riskier than, than less volatile assets. And then lastly volatility is an important variable for calculating option prices which is the volatility index for the S&P 500 shortly called the VIX. So the Chicago Board Options Exchange calculate the VIX index from the near-term expiration dates of the options on the S&P 500 index. Don't worry yourself with these definitions. Basically, we have an index that measures the options expiration, the next month expiration on the S&P 500 index. And this index basically measure how much fear there is in the market within the next 30 days. So this is the chart of the S&P 500 index. This is the cash index price on the top. And then in the middle is the volatility index. And then at the bottom is the ATR. This is the average true range for five days. Now we can see every time the volatility spikes, the market goes down. And this is why it's called the fear index, because every time it spikes, the market is afraid of something and therefore the price starts falling down. So, for example, this is COVID and we can see that the VIX went to 80 and of course the market tank. But we also notice that the ATR correlates highly with this index. Now, remember, the VIX index is not measuring the range of the price. It is only measuring the fear in the market, but it highly correlated with the ATR, which is measuring the range of the bar. And we can go back further. And you can see every time spikes, the ATR is spiking. And look at this one. Again, spike, market is afraid of something, tanks. So that's good because the VIX index only measure the fear and greed in the S&P 500 index. Yes, it coincides with the volatility uh, of the bar spiking up, basically expanding. But what about if you want to measure volatility on other markets, we cannot use the VIX index. And that's why I put the ATR because you can use the ATR, the average true range on any instrument. Now I want to make an important distinction between volatility and direction. Most people uh, confuse these two together. So this is the Australian US dollar Forex pair. And I put here efficiency ratio and the ADX. And you can see they are correlated and of course they should be because they are measuring direction. Remember, efficiency ratio measuring the noise. So the higher it is, that means it is very efficient and that means we are in a directional move. Also ADX measured the same thing. So this is a kind of advanced ADX uh, where it's color uh, the movement plus it measures the movement. So here you can see it's red and here you can see it's green and it's using the minus di plus di to find the colors. But I, I just wanted to show you that they are highly correlated and the, both of these measure direction. And now let me put the ATR on top of it. And now the yellow line is the ATR. And while yes, it is most of the times correlated with the directional move, 
but that is not the case all the time. So for example, here we can see they are not correlated, here they are not correlated, and here also they are not correlated. So this is very important. So you need to distinguish between a directional move and a volatility move. So some indicator measure direction, that means we are going up, we are going down, we are going sideways. Other indicators measure volatility, that we are in a high volatile market right now or low volatility. And some indicators measure both. So let me explain to you uh, clearly what's the difference. So imagine this is a chart moving up and you can see this is a low noise, meaning we are moving up smoothly and also low volatility, meaning the range of the bars is small. And the chart below, we are also smoothly moving up, but we have high volatility, meaning the bar ranges are big compared, of course, to previous period. So this leads us to a definition of the markets. Volatility can be uh, low to high and noise can be low to high. And this will separate the market in four regimes. So we can either have no direction and low volatility or high direction and high volatility or no direction and low volatility or high direction and high volatility. So this can be separated in four market regimes. So this is the simplest definition of the markets. Great, so now we know that volatility is different than direction. And this is very important distinction that you need to know in order to develop really robust strategies. So you know what indicator to use for what purpose. Now I did produce a video about directional filters, which is using the ADX indicator, and you can watch this video in the link uh, above in the corner. And today we will use the volatility filter for strategies. Okay, now that we know that average true range is a good measure for volatility, there is a problem with this ATR. So here is the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, and this is the average true range 14 bars. And we can see right now we are spiking up, the volatility is high, and the measure is 7.64. But if I put the, uh, the futures, then we can see the number is 77. And if I put Apple, the number is five. And if I put Tesla, the number is 57. And if I put the Euro USD futures, it's 0 0.007. So you can see it's all over the place. Like there is no uh, limit like the RSI, it's not bound where we can put, pick a level and say, okay, if the ATR is below five, that means we are in a low volatility right now. And if we are above 90, we are in high volatility. So we need to find a way to normalize this indicator in order to be able to pick a level or to compare it to other markets. Now, if you are not a programmer, then it's gonna be hard because basically you need to find a way to code this uh, normalization. But I will teach you a good trick to use any indicator without normalization and still achieve good results. So this is a very simple strategy. It's using the New Zealand Canadian dollar on uh, one hour time frame since 2008. And we will go long when the RSI 2 below 20. We will exit when the RSI 2 above 8. Now I have a second chart, which is the four hour time frame of the same indicator. So this is the performance uh, since 2008. We have 3,783 trades, and of course we are losing money and huge drawdown. So let's see if the volatility filter can enhance the strategy. So first trick we will use is, <laughs> if you are a StrategyQuant X user, you know how it's uh, very cumbersome to add and delete. So you can add all the indicators you like, like I did here and I, oh, I added them in the short exit signal. Now I don't have an entry signal, so this will not be used. And then you can just drag and drop it here and now this is gonna be used. So here what we will use is the bar range on the sub chart. That means we are using the second time frame chart, which is the four hours. And we're looking for the bar to be greater than the average true range of the past 14 bars. So we're comparing, we don't know the level, but we're comparing the current bar range. It is greater than the past average 14 bars. 
and we can see that we significantly enhance the strategy. So the strategy now, it's only 138 trades, 15% drawdown, and we are making money. And now I will use another way, which is to compare the ATR to itself. So this is the ATR, again on the second chart, 14 bars, and I'm comparing it to itself. So using the indicator highest value. So I'm comparing it to the highest value of the past 10 bars. So this one has 684 trades and making $15,000 a 24% drawdown. So as you can see, ATR is an extremely good filter for volatility for your strategy. And I show you two ways to use it without a level. So you can compare the bar range to the average true range, or you can compare the ATR range to itself uh, for the highest value or the lowest value. Also, you can compare the ATR if it's rising, if it's falling. So there are many ways to use the average true range without a fixed level uh, by comparing it to itself in many ways. And of course, if you normalize the ATR and you come up with a new indicator, then you can compare multiple instruments on one level. As always, if you have any comments, any questions, please do so below the video and I'll be more than happy to answer you. I do read and answer all questions sent to the channel. Also, if you want to take this further and be a part of my inner circle, you are more than welcome to join the Discord server through the link below, where I host live weekly questions and answer sessions with more than 400 questions already answered in video sessions. Alongside the tactical asset allocation portfolio signals and strategy and indicator code like the one you saw. As always, good luck with your trading, good luck with your investing, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.